Hey, that'll wake you up. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. And this morning from Webster Bank Arena, the Bridgeport region, Cinderella, Oregon, the 10 seed, faces three seed Maryland for a spot in the Elite Eight. We look at a bracket now in Silicon, the incomparable Yukon Huskies set to face UCLA in game two this afternoon, trying to make it 110 straight wins. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Dave O'Brien. My partner's Carol Lawson, Doris Burke. Holly Rowe joining us in just a couple of moments. And Doris, eyes wide open, really a theme for Oregon because this game is tipping at 8.30 in the morning, their time on the Pacific Coast for Maryland. Eyes have to be on one opponent today. Well, they've been locked in through the first two games of this tournament. I think you can trace that directly to their two experienced and highly accomplished seniors. When you look at Shatori Walker-Kimbrough and Brianna Jones, both their jerseys hang in the Xfinity Center back in College Park, but the basketball is in the hands of the dynamic freshman point guard Destiny Slocum, who gives this team great confidence and great swag. On the other side, you've got an Oregon team. They've got some pretty good freshmen, too. I love this group. They're fresh. They're not packaged. They're not processed. They come in playing young, hungry, and free. And you look at their free, three freshmen in the starting lineup, the post players, Hebert and McGuire, the skill and the toughness they bring to the front court. And how about Sabrina Ionescu, a star in the making for the Oregon and ducks. There's two things you need. They're pillars for postseason success. That's confident, confidence and belief. And Oregon has an abundance of both of those traits. And it helps to have a great point guard on that topic. We bring in the great Holly Roll. Holly, these two point guards are going to be a blast to watch today. Well, these are two of the best point guards in the country. Number one and two in the nation in assists per game among the top five schools. But they are true freshmen, both of them in this experience for the first time. Think about this. Last year at this time, Oregon's Sabrina Ionescu was the MVP of the McDonald's All-American game. And she brings that same swagger to this Ducks team, scoring at almost 14 points a game while assisting at a high rate. But for Maryland, Destiny Slocum was in Meridian, Idaho, winning state championships last time this year. And she is doing a great job with composure and poise. I just talked to her in the layup line and said, hey, are you excited you're in the Sweet 16 for the first time? She said, I feel great. She slept well last night, and her coach says she's never had a single freshman-like game this season. We'll see if that continues today. Thanks, Holly. We take a look at the Capital One starting lineups. And for Maryland, Jones, Walker, Kimbrough, and Slocum are the heart of the turfs. Slocum, the electric point guard. Maryland, the number one offense in America, getting 90 points a game. For Oregon, Ruthie Hebert and Mallory McGuire go 6-4 and 6-5 in the front court. It's a big team with six players standing 6-3 or taller, tied for the tallest team in the country. Now the Oregon men are into the Elite Eight with a big victory over Michigan. The Oregon Ducks on the ladies' side hoping to join them, trying to knock off Maryland. Here this morning at 11.30. And we are underway as the Ducks win the opening tip. Nice crowd on hand, too, given the hour. Of course, a lot of UConn fans in attendance. And waiting on game two. The Zorla, 5'10 sophomore from Spain. Ionescu, terrific with the basketball and can shoot it, too. On the entry, Heber down low. Went for the window and came up empty on the first shot. Here in Bridgeport today. Here's Slocum up top. The freshman from Idaho. And just dazzling. We've got an Oregon team that's going to change defenses under Kelly Graves. And you've got to check that young woman from three. She she's is, a great shooter. Yeah, she is as consistently solid from three-point territory as Maryland has ever had. In fact, the great Christy Tolliver was one of the best. And she has bettered her numbers. Yeah, only about 46% in her career from three-point land. Walker Kimbrough. Tell you what, the Ducks uniforms are going to wake you up if you're a little on the sleepy side. Between the two colors, oh, yeah. Combination of both colors. Oh. Ebert back out for Bando. Also deadly from the three-point line, but that shot clock is down to one. There's Orla off the side of the backboard and a shot clock violation, so a choppy start. Although Brenda Fries loves the defensive effort. One of the elite coaches in America. 32 and 11 all time in the NCAA tournament, 6 and 1 in the Sweet 16. Pass tipped and Walker Kimbrough with it, averaging 19 points a game. We talked to Shatori yesterday about where she is in her career now as senior. She's brimming with confidence. 
Well, she should be because she's a totally different player than when she first walked onto campus in College Park. She's improved her game in almost every area, and she doesn't want to go out the way Maryland went out in the NCAA tournament a season ago, and that's being upset in the second round at home. Oregon 22 and 13, 13 losses. We talked about Maryland having the number one scoring team in the country, just north of 90 points. This is what I wonder about for Oregon. Can they score enough? They're going to run good offense. They're going to take quality shots. They're going to try to control the tempo with their offense. But can they put a number on Maryland? Because this team can flat score. Walker Kimbrough certainly can, but she's missed her first two shots. McGuire tearing down a rebound. She is the niece of baseball's Mark McGuire. Ebert gets 15 points, nine rebounds, and shoots at a very, very high percentage. Early trend, though, here in the first couple of moments, anyway, is it's difficult to get off a good shot for Oregon. That one is knocked out of play off Maryland. Well, tremendous rotation, and Kelly Graves has been outstanding as a basketball coach. We remember him from the deep runs with Gonzaga. But care great rotation by Maryland. I absolutely love the no call by the official. Yes. Lisa Mattingly patient. There wasn't enough contact either way for a call. Really good job there. Benny Luna and Kevin Petel joining Lisa Mattingly, and that's going to be a traveling violation. Maryland coming in at 32 and two. The Terps took apart Bucknell in round one, and West Virginia, number 22 team in round two, with UConn-like efficiency. 42 and 27 point wins. Walker Kimbrough giving it up. Both teams choppy here. No score yet. Up high, here's McGuire. Banging with Jones. That could be an excellent matchup today. Brianna Jones at 6 3. Although it's really trimmed down and gotten in great shape over the course of her career. Hebert went for the bank shot for two. First time she tried that move, who was she matched up against Jones? It's a little different matchup with the other post player for Maryland. Slocum wow. zips the pass. Boy, you've got to be ready. Confrey barely was. That one off target by Charles. A fight for the rebound. Back to the Ducks. Ducks are not a team that relies all that much on the three, though they can hit it 39%. But it's not that big a weapon for them, and they turn it over. They've already kicked it over three times. Walker Kimbrough on the penetration. Draws the foul with 6.21 to go here in the first quarter. And let's bring in Holly Rowe. Well, think about this. Oregon is playing with six freshmen. We asked them their expectation to start the season, and they were all just hoping for a little playing time. Well, now here they are in the Sweet 16, and I've definitely seen a few nerves early here. Wide eyes on the court. Too many early turnovers. They just need to settle down and play and believe that they're good enough right now. But a very, very young team for Oregon in the Sweet 16 for the first time. Now, I asked Kelly Graves yesterday, how about all those freshmen? How do you handle that? And he said, take a look at my head. There's not a hair on it. <laughs> Come on, Kelly. He didn't have a hair didn't on it before any. this year. Come on now. <laughs> it's not coming back. Tied 2-2. We call Oregon certainly the Cinderella of the Bridgeport region. They travel clear across the country for the first two rounds of the tournament as a 10 seed, carrying 13 losses. But Kelly's Ducks pull off two upsets in Durham against Temple and the host Duke Blue Devils. Good open look for Hebert. Not there, follows her own miss and kicks it out. Gazorla right back to her. Wants to take it in strong again, but can't connect. McGuire tipped it off of Maryland. You can see what Oregon wants to do, right? They have two post players that they start. You've got a Maryland team that looks more like four guards with Kyla Charles in that other position. So they're going to try to take advantage of their size. Charles has started every game as a freshman. This outstanding class and a whistle underneath. 551 to play in the first. You know, I, I like the way that Oregon has started this game. And we've talked about this being a tempo game and them potentially not being able to, as you see Bando with the drive there and get fouled, them maybe not being able to run with Maryland for the full 40 minutes. So what do you see from them offensively? And I actually like what they've done offensively. They're getting late into the clock. They're getting into the last third of the clock. And one thing, one trait of this team that is hard to get for young players is they know who's supposed to be taking the shots and they work to find those players. Sometimes you have experienced teams that don't, that don't figure that out. They know where their money is made, and that's the freshmen that have gotten them going. This is the other way they control tempo, too. We talked about controlling it with your offense, a little soft 2-2-1, two, two, make Maryland play in the half court. A lot less dangerous team when they're not out and running. Slocum 
with a shot you figure she would hit in her sleep right back up and in by Stephanie Jones Brianna Jones little sister little a relative term because she's 6 2. Yes. There's a nice syn synergy between those two as you might expect from sisters. Tough catch by McGuire and a tie up on the play. Possession arrow will go over to Maryland here. Kind of joking about Slocum taking a medium range jumper because of that amazing shot she hit against West Virginia. Two hands over her head, three quarter court, nothing but net. And we're going to show it to you a little later. The theft by Bando. She knocks it clean. And a short jumper by UNESCO is good. And that's not a, a press meant to necessarily turn you over. That's just a careless play by Maryland. Slocum weaving her way through Walker Kimbrough right back on top of the point guard. She thought about it. Just getting started here in the first quarter of game one. The regional semifinal Slocum. Yes. She is awfully quick. Both of these freshman guards, when a play breaks down, they have the ability to go score. And that's what's so fun to watch this matchup between Slocum and Yonescu. Walker Kimbrough went for the theft, got it. She'll drive it and score it. Well, you look at what these two seniors have accomplished. 125 and 16 between Brianna Jones and Shatori Walker Kimbrough. It is no wonder their jerseys are hanging at the top of the Xfinity Center. And very rare, even with a great offense, to see two players averaging 20 and 19. Mm -hmm. And they're both way up there in their points per game. Bezorla from Las Palmas, Spain. Nice move there. Well, she does what you have to do, right? Destiny Slocum Kira is trying to put some pressure on. So as a point guard, you, you, you put it to the deck. There's no baseline help. You go right at him. This Maryland team is tough to keep up with offensively. They shoot 51%. Another whistle, foul underneath, and 38% from the line. But that means they make every shot from all over the floor, especially Slocum. And more on that when we come back. Showed you the Slocum shot against West Virginia. So he brought in four Fairfield soccer players used to that throwing style, and they tried the shot, tried to duplicate what Destiny did. Angus, Diego, Tommy, and Jack, and someone named Doris as well got in the act, sort of. Oh! <laughs> I love the girl. Look at Holly Rowe here, waiting for it to bounce. The only one she gave a hard time was you. She let the guys pass on it. Nobody made it. And I think there was something like 35 attempts. Yes. There, not for Dor Doris just had the one. But all of those DB, guys. that was a dying quail. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was a, hey, listen. All I know is nobody on our crew besides me was intrepid enough in spirit to just go ahead and try it. I, I really enjoyed watching you do it, though. But I did Google some articles of Destiny Slocum when she was a very young lady. And one of her very first youth basketball coaches said she had freakish upper body strength as a 14-year-old. And I think we saw that because it did take freakish upper body strength. Even the guys couldn't do it. You know what I loved about it? After she released the shot, she had her right hand in the air and kept it there until it bottomed out like, I'm just shooting a routine three. I do this every day. <laughs> Even though she shot it with two hands, she, <laughs> she shot it with one hand. She did it to it being completely lucky. Down on the low block, Hebert knocked away. Jones comes away with it. Yeah, see, I think it's a mistake for her to take that challenge and just think she's going to score over the top. I mean, Jones is just too big and an improved defensive player. Oregon certainly wants to slow it down. You know, Maryland wants to heat it up. The basket by Stephanie Jones. To be honest with you, Brianna Jones has come so far. I mean, they were worried about her passing ability out of the post. I love that she's a willing passer on the double team. I'll tell you what I'm worried about right now, Doris, is Oregon's help side defense, right? I mean, if you're going to be in no man's land and you're not going to go double if you're Oregon and you're guarding Stephanie Jones, then you can't let her get the pass. Like, either go or don't go, but don't be in no man's land where you give up a layup either way. Oregon's first ever appearance in the Sweet 16. Their freshman, a major reason why. 63% of the scoring has come from rookies so far in the tournament. Brianna Jones just picked up her first foul. Zorla at the line and coming up at 1:30 on ESPN the UConn Huskies play in their 24th straight Sweet 16 as they look for their 110th straight win against UCLA 
I mean, the, the numbers just numb your mind. 24 consecutive Sweet 16s. We say that like it's commonplace. It certainly is not. Walker Kimbrell way downtown. She's cold early. Maryland by one. Oregon trying to grab the lead. And close in the kick out. Unescu, the 5'10 freshman, the heart and soul, and the one who really runs this Ducks team. She has the presence of a senior. Nearly turned it over there. Gilden picked it up. Zorla on the baseline. She likes that move. Uh, I'll tell you what, she's been aggressive right there. Just getting to the baseline side again. A really nice job getting to that right hand in the drive. And coming off arguably her best game all season, 17 points. But Jones can be unstoppable under there. You know, because Orla's one of those players that has an offbeat rhythm to her game and to her dribble. And so when you're playing against a player like that, sometimes they catch you. They catch you not being able to, to time that rhythm. And so she's a player that, that doesn't look super quick, but she's hard to keep in front because of that difference in the rhythm. Also an excellent passer. She can rack up the assist as well. Certainly Unescu does at five per game. She has it with a shot clock down to two. Got to get it in the air, and it's blocked by Jones and a shot clock violation. Well, that's just a poor decision because she had a big on her. So you have a big on you, what do you do? You drive. And then if you're going to do that and, and kind of try and lull the big to sleep and shoot it late, you don't do it at two seconds because the big now knows that you got to get it up. You try that at like three or four seconds and try and, and beat them from guessing that you're going to shoot it. Six turnovers for Oregon. And they are fortunate Maryland doesn't have a bigger lead. But they are having their own trouble, Maryland, making shots on this end. Unusual for them, a team that has scored 100 points seven times this season. Pace is Oregon, right? I mean, oh, it, feel, no it, 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 feels, it feels like it's Oregon's tempo. McGuire nice. in close, nice touch. It's always easier. Obviously, Maryland, who scores 90 points a game, would like to see this thing go up and down and be a 94-foot game. But the hardest thing to do when a team is going to play tempo and use as much clock as Oregon is doing is get in the tempo where you want. And that's a poor shot right there. And this is what Maryland does. They offensive rebounded, they score in the paint. But that was really a poor looking shot from Shatori Walker Kimbrough. Seems to be forcing it a little bit, but she had Brianna Jones to clean it up. Who averages 20 points and 11 rebounds a game. And it's McGuire starting to heat up the freshman. Well, smart, right? What is she doing? She's getting to that little mid range, getting to that mid post area. Is very important in Oregon's first round win over Temple. 13 points and 10 rebounds. Jones on the back down. Slapped away by McGuire on a clean play. So she's really a factor here in the first quarter, which has just 40 seconds left. So open side pick and roll with a guard that can make decisions and a big that is skilled enough to shoot. It is so difficult to defend. I love that play. Well, and here's what you're going to see. And Brianna Jones gets another offensive rebound. Kara, to your point, Maryland talked all day at practice yesterday. Brianna Jones put her in the pick and roll, make her guard, and they've got a pick and pop post who can make her step away. You can see she's slow a foot out there, so they can really take advantage. And it all depends on your coverage. I mean, I don't think Jones played either of those pick and rolls poorly because she has to guard the player coming off the ball screen, but in the open side and require with that good looking jump shot. Round it out. Nice. Tough rebound underneath by Gilden at 6 1. Doesn't look like a team that's dominated by freshman, does it, Oregon? It's a team that's played with great composure. At the horn, that one glances away by Charles. So Oregon, with a push there, led by Mallory McGuire, grabs the lead. And when we come back, Holly Roll will be joined by Kelly Graves, the Oregon Ducks head coach, in just a moment. Well, Coach, this is a Maryland team that loves transition, getting up and down the floor. What do you feel you've done successfully so far, getting them to play your pace? Well, we haven't given them any easy buckets. On, on made baskets, we've been able to kind of slow them up a little bit with the 2-2-1, two, two, just to slow them down. We're not expecting to get much out of that other than to just control the tempo a little bit. Um, but 10 minutes down, you know, these guys, once they get it rolling, we, we've got to continue to, 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 to keep the transition game a non-factor. Thank you, Coach. Okay, thank you. Well, what a home run hire for Oregon, Kelly Grace. And, and this is a guy that made a living as a double-digit seed leading Gonzaga teams into the second weekend. And you know, one of the things that struck me in visiting with him yesterday was when he said, you know, I, I could have stayed at Gonzaga forever, but I, I wanted to see if 
I could go to a program and get to the third week and get to a Final Four, and he's certainly building something special there in Eugene. In 2011, the 11th seed, he goes to an Elite Eight, seven years in the NCAA tournament, and obviously, you know, we talked to him about the support that the Oregon program gets. Other than the Connecticut Huskies, in terms of Nike support and the kind of equipment they get, et cetera, et cetera, the, the facilities at their disposal, he's in a really good spot, Kara. It's a program that hasn't had much success, and I'll tell you, they locked in when they took over as a staff. They locked in on this particular freshman class as saying, hey, we've got to get these Pacific Northwest kids. And what does he do with them? He brings them to their first NCAA tournament uh, since 05 and first Sweet 16 in school history. Pretty good stuff. Very much a family affair for Kelly, his son Max, a practice player, traveling with the team. And helping out dad 17 16 Oregon as we get ready for the second quarter that first quarter despite the pace certainly being to the liking of Oregon there were 10 lead changes and Lisa Mattingly going over to the official scorer here so something's up for just a moment. It's apparently some sort of a substitution issue Holly's over to check this out and pin it down for us. Oregon with a one point lead. And Lisa going over now to Brenda Freeze to double check. Is she saying that Kyla Charles can't come in? So the, pro the problem right now is number three did not appropriately check in. Lisa Mattingly saying number 12 was still supposed to be out there. So they're gonna have her number three come out of the game right now. Bringing her back onto the floor, at least for the moment. It's a timeout. Why can't they? So. Yeah, we're in between quarters. Did she say yeah. she inappropriately checked in, so never went to the scorer's table and stepped on the floor? <laughs> Is that what they're talking about? I think Kyla's wondering the same thing. The freshman from Glendale, Maryland. It's, it's something like we need to get the bottom of, though, I think. They might be bringing back. <laughs> I would like to restart yes. the game. Yes. <laughs> Frankly, I don't care who's in the game at the moment. I just like to get going again. I think we all feel that way. So, but Shatori, Shatori uh, Walker Kimbrough did not check in appropriately. So she's had to set out here. They will ask her to check in appropriately with the officials when it's So out. here's the appropriate check in after the throw out off the inbounds play. So, I mean, it's a little, bit, a little bit rough for Maryland at the moment. <laughs> Just a bit. Opening seconds of the second quarter. Thanks for being awake with us as we've hit noon on the East Coast. And, you know, Oregon says this is no big deal to start it at 8.30 in the morning, their time. They did go back after leaving Durham with those two great upset wins. They went back to Oregon, but they stayed on East Coast time. They kept their clocks on the East Coast. That one picked off by the sub -conflict. She can help out from three-point land. She hits 39%. And here she is with the first one, a little bit short. It's Jones again, and she's tough under there. Well, they, they are getting absolutely killed on the offensive glass, which we know that she can carve out such tremendous space. They also have a huge advantage points in the paint right now, Maryland. Jones, incidentally, has set the all-time Maryland single-season scoring record with her eight points here in the first quarter as part of a marvelous career. Bando outside, deadly from three at 48%. Is the shot clock again a factor at five? McGuire getting the pass down low for Gildan. They waited a long time, but she hit it. Great catch. Well, Slocum was working so hard to prohibit the catch, but that's why you stick with your offensive game plan. They saw the mismatch with Slocum on it. Ducks being very patient. Charles weaving inside. That won't drop. Jones again with a misfire. Rebound torn away by Gildan, who's making an impact. She's had an interesting sophomore season to this point. Her minutes in production kind of yo-yoing around. She had three straight games in December. She started, has not started in the last 21. She gets another touch, and that one comes free. And a foul against the Ducks to stop the clock at 8.24 in the second. And now finally, Shatori Walker Kimbrough will be allowed to re-enter the basketball game. The foul on Justine Hall of the Ducks. 
a little frantic here without Ionescu in the game at the end of the shot clock. And it's just a nice high-low pass there from McGuire to Gildy. Slocum back on high for Charles. She'll drive it, little contact, no. McGuire with another rebound. And another whistle. Just a kick ball by Comfroy trying to prohibit the outlet pass. Still feels frantic to me for Maryland on offense. Like they're trying to speed up tempo by playing frantic. And that's not the way you speed up tempo. You give credit to, to Oregon, making them play and execute in a half-court set. Vanesco, let's fly. Not this time. On the outlet. Down low to Frazier. She'll work in close for two. That was a determined effort. Boy, just a tremendous job using the dribble and using it to get separation or get that defender right in the position she wanted her. Frazier more size, but a quick strike on the other end. And back and forth we go as the lead continues to change hands here in Bridgeport. Could be that way all day here. Walker Kimbrough beyond the three. The best three-point shooter in Maryland history. Out of play. 7-18 left in the half. Turnover starting to mount for Brenda Fries' team. Brenda winning the national championship back in 2006. Walker Kimbrough has to get the sneaker back on. Brenda was just 35 years old at the time. She says this Oregon team reminds her of her 016. Well, just because of the freshman, the talented freshman class and the fact that they win a national championship. And what she said throughout the course of that year was they didn't know any better. That they didn't know that they were supposed to be nervous in this kind of environment. And Kelly Graves told us the exact same thing yesterday. What did you say, my vegan friend in the open? You called them uh, not pre-packaged. Yeah, or not packaged or processed. They're fresh, baby. They're fresh. Sitting there thinking the audience should know you're a vegan because that's <laughs> such vegan language. That's right. <laughs> McGuire denied good tight defense by Frazier on the run. Out it goes. And again, that offense is not in sync yet. Well, you can't, you can't in a rush to score the basketball. And they have had three possessions and three straight turnovers. You, you can't hit home run plays. Listen, if they're going to make you execute in a half-court set, you better prove at this time of the year that you can beat them in a half-court tempo game. Walker Kimbrough again lacing up that shoe. We'll see if it makes a difference and gets her started. And she's been off target early. The kick here for Ionescu. Yes, a great look from three. There's certainly one team that looks more comfortable than the other, and it is the double-digit seed Oregon, who looks very comfortable. Frazier up high. Went in strong, and she'll take the hit. Fouled on the play. Well, a trip to the Frozen Four in Chicago is on the line today. Boston University facing Minnesota Duluth at 6 Eastern on ESPNU and watch ESPN and visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. We have ice under this floor. Mm. And I'll tell you who it's driving crazy. My partner, Kara Lawson, who decided to go coat. after the open. Yes, coat. I had to. In the full winter gear. I had to. Fashion be damned, I says Kara Lawson. I had to go with it. It's freezing in here. It's freezing. <laughs> it's freezing. She'll drop in the shot to make it 20. Four to 21 with 621 remaining here in the first half in Bridgeport. I just knew we were doing that Frozen Four promo. That's uh, that's what I was going for. Slocum took a tumble. Bando deep in the corner. This is an Oregon team that really spaces well. Bando on the drive, can't spin it in. Rebound tipped and controlled by the Turks. Trailing by three early. Again, the top offense in the country at 90 points a game, but so far not looking like it, and they commit a foul. Foul will go against the Turks here.
Yeah, so they basically catch up the moving screen trying to free Shatori Walker Kimbrough on the little down screen on both sides of the floor. Stephanie Jones with the personal. So tempting to do that, right? As opposed to trying to get your offense going, just slide a little bit over Dave to give your teammate a little extra help. Oregon now with a shove, 539 showing in the quarter. And the Terps will go to the bench and bring on Sarah Myers after Destiny Slocum picked up her first foul. So she's going to come out for a breather, not in any kind of foul trouble. Yonescu running the point, coming off a really nice 13.8 rebound, six assist stat filler against Duke in round two. She does that all the time. They move it beautifully for Hebert for two. And that becomes the biggest lead so far today for the Ducks up by five. They've gotten into their kind of style of offense. Walker Kimbrough with another miss. Big fight for the rebound. Frazier and a whistle on the play. And that foul being offensive. I didn't love it. <laughs> Ebert up to set the screen. A little pick and roll, but blocked away by Frazier, who is quickly making a big impact in this game. Well, she's playing hard. Really good choice to block with the left hand, right, so you don't come across the body. Terrapins would love to get number 32 going on the offensive end. They already have Jones hot. Well, you can see the activity of Frazier on both ends of the floor to me. Uh, just a little face-up move, an efficient dribble. They haven't been able to stop Brianna Jones whenever she's been able to board it or on catches in the post area. You would think she'd get a touch then every time down the floor already into double figures. And Walker Kimbrough has been chilly. There's McGuire on the baseline. She likes the shot, not there. Walker Kimbrough will start the run now for Maryland. And they do want to do that. They want it up tempo. Thrown away by Walker Kimbrough. She looks out of sorts. Completely. Unusual for her. Very smooth senior. Zorla denied. McGuire. Under four minutes to go here before halftime in Bridgeport. Yonescu, yes, on that from three. Well, this kid, there's no question whose basketball team this is. You watch Yonescu on tape. She, she is not afraid to get into her teammates when they make mistakes. She's the hardest working player on the team. They respond to her leadership, Dave. McGuire will pick up the foul, and she took a hit. She's in some pain. But the foul will be on her as we go to the break, and it's Oregon by six. Coming up on the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report, Maria Lobo and Coach Landers break down Oregon and Maryland. And so far, only 23 points for the nation's leading scorers. Yeah, Oregon has offensively controlled the pace this game, but you're almost just waiting for that inevitable Maryland run. They, they really have. The tempo has been the key for Oregon. Uh, you wonder when Maryland's going to come down, settle down in the half court, punch it inside. All right, we got plenty strength. more where that breakdown came from. We're also going to introduce you to Quinnipiac, the Bobcats, and Doris Lobo said she would have at least hit the rim on her half-court shot. I, I want to see a 5-0. You come on out here and add a decade to your age and then come hit the rim, my sweet girl. I love Rebecca, but no chance. <laughs> she hits the rim. No chance. Maybe backboard. That's a Final Four bet, and she knows what's on, at stake. That's when we all think we can do it from about 70 feet away. At least get it up there, and then when you try it, you're seeing your chiropractor. Yeah, hitting the rim is hard. Yeah. Frazier at the line. She's really keeping them close in this thing. Defensively on the glass, and now with four points. Brianna Jones leading all scores with 10 points for Maryland. And she rattles in the second one. Let's bring in Holly as we talk about this tempo Holly roll. Well, Brenda Freeze was fired up in that last huddle. She challenged her team to start dictating defensively. She said, we're not dictating anything with our energy and our passion right now. Their newbies are dictating to us 
Are you kidding me? She can't believe that this young, inexperienced Oregon team is so composed right now, and her experienced Maryland team is playing tight. And then they got to the bench, and Shatori Kimbr Walker Kimbrough was sitting on the bench. Brenda touched her on the shoulder gently and said, hey, you're pressing right now. I need you out there playing free. She's got her on the bench right now to get her mind right. Yeah, she's one for six, Holly. Had a tough time giving the basketball up a couple of times, too. The foul there on the baseline is they're making sure to get it to Jones. That'll go on Hebert, her second. One for six and three turnovers for Shatori Walker Kimbrough. So it's not just about the missed shots. She's trying to hit home run plays on her drives and making mistakes. Confoy's pass picked off. Stolen away by Gilden. Has nine turnovers for the Maryland Terrapins. Corner jumper Kazorla too strong and Slocum there for the rebound. That's another thing she can do at 5-7. That one batted away by Gilden. Oregon is just more active. I'll tell you what they're doing. They are in a dead sprint, Dave, in transition defense on missed shots or turnovers. You're seeing those green jerseys sprint back. Wow. And how about Miss UNESCO? UNESCO, excuse me, who we talked about in the open. Carol also talked about she's got eight points, three assists, and three rebounds. And this is not a player who necessarily is going to pop off the screen in terms of athleticism. But what about an impact for this young lady? Well, she's a star in the making because she gets how to play the game. I mean, she's the best player on the floor, but she doesn't have to take 30 shots to feel like she's the best player on the floor. So I love her pace and her rhythm, her tempo. And Oregon, uh, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that they've been able to come in and not not necessarily compete, but win win the first 18 minutes. I mean that is that is an accomplishment for this young group. I think the shocker is it goes back to what Holly said. They look like the more poised basketball yes. team, ready to go here this morning, as opposed to Maryland, which has been battle tested. On the baseline, Hebert, no, big fight for the rebound, and now Maryland wants to run. Slocum hasn't done too much here in the early going. Jones, that's a tough catch. He whirls in, can't finish. And a whistle with 2.02 to go in the half. You know, you, one thing you look at, uh, when you look at the Pac-12 record for Oregon, they took some lumps uh, in what has been one of the stronger conferences in the country, and you could look no further than the Sweet 16 makeup of the Pac-12. But for Kelly Graves and his entire group, one thing they said to us yesterday is, we couldn't guard anybody at the start of the year. I'm impressed with what they're doing on the defensive end of the floor. But Kazola right by everybody. She went right at Jones and knocks it down. And a timeout. Brenda Free, she is not happy with a minute 47 left in the half. Oregon playing with a lot of life and a lot of poise. And they have opened up a six-point lead here not far before the break. Talked about Shatori Walker Kimbrough, one of the best players in the country, a senior, but a case of the bobbles today. Yeah, a drive, two drives to nowhere. She's driving into size. On a couple of those, she turns it over. On that one, it's a missed opportunity. I mean, her timing is off, her passing is off. This is a player, Shatori Walker Kimbrough, Dave, with 2,140 points. She of the 46% three-point shooting. She is an ESPNW All-American, but to this point through the first half, not quite there. The mind's a powerful thing. And when you are a senior and you want so badly to get your team to the next round, sometimes that impacts the poise with which you play. And I think that's what's happened to Shatori here in the first half. Tie up on the floor here. Possession arrow will go to the other end. So everything right now is breaking the Ducks' way. 22 wins, 13 losses, but right now the better team against 32 and 2 Maryland. I tell you, Brenda is always open to us recording her pregame and halftime speeches. It is going to be an interesting Maryland locker room at the half. Zorla on the drive. That's a great pass. Gilded up from behind. Charles with the deflection. And the foul. That'll go against the Terps. Look at Charles for that personal. Check it. They're going to get Brianna Jones for this one. That's going to be her second. Yeah, and that's costly if you're Brianna Jones. You, you just can't. I'm sorry. Going to go back to Charles as we had it originally. 
you know, Gilding's given them some great minutes. I was a little concerned when when McGuire or Hebert would go out of the game and say, okay, what is Oregon going to have in the post to be able to combat? And Gilden has given them very good minutes. Her activity defensively, I think, has helped change the game for Oregon. She's been very, very good here. Gilden drops it in, a 75% foul shooter. 33-25, and you see the shooting percentage from Maryland, but today just 30%. Confoy on the wing. Frazier left wide open to take it. They dared her, and she knocked it down. Well, they're trying to get to their high-low game, but you could see the concern of the other players to sag down and help on a Jones catch, and that opens up the jumper for Frazier. So these Cinderella Ducks coming off back-to-back -back upsets in Durham of Temple and Duke are trying to pull it off again, but against the number three seed that many thought would go to the final four. Tough catch by Bando. Shot clock at six. Baseline right on the line. Yonescu got it from three. She absolutely bottomed it out to make it 36 to 27. What a big shot with that shot clock. Largest lead right now for the Oregon Ducks. And UNESCO's fingerprints have been all over this half. She has 11. She's heated up. Slocum fumbling it out of play off her. Right back over to the Ducks. Uh, we talked about the leadership that UNESCO, just a freshman, she stepped on campus and started holding people accountable. Why? Because she puts in the time. Doesn't panic under duress of the shot clock. And if you know anything about Kelly Graves, this is what you get from his coaching. She waited until the last possible moment to come to Oregon, too. On the feet, swatted out of play. Frazier all over it. Where would they be without her? Oh Point goodness. four remaining before halftime. That's the kind of block shot that makes you think twice inside. <laughs> Ruthie Hebert back on. More size for a tip here. That's all they have time for with four tenths remaining. What a half, though, for the Ducks. They are wide awake indeed. And tossed out of play. That's how the first half comes to an end. Outstanding block, but Maryland, frankly, didn't have enough of that. And Oregon has shocked the Turks here in the first half. They end the half on a 12-4 run. And lead it 36-27. Let's go to Holly. Well, Sabrina, it took some time for your team to get your first points in this game. When did you start to feel comfortable and just play? We just got to stay composed. We ran our offense side, top side, and we'll, we'll get any shot we want. You just launched a three and hit and had the best reaction after. Why are you so comfortable out here right now? Well, the crowd's been great. You know, they're firing us up. My team's firing us up, and that was a big-time shot that we had to hit. Keys to the second half. You know, we got to play defense. We got to make stops, and we got to keep scoring. Thank you. Thank you. In other words, they don't have to change a thing. She is raring to go. She had nine points in the second quarter. Now to Maria, Rebecca, and Andy in the studio. Upset-minded and 10-seed Oregon up by nine points over the three-seed Maryland at halftime. Dave O'Brien, Doris Burke, Carol Lawson, and Holly Roll with you. Doris, she's talking about Maryland's mindset needing to change starting right now. Right. To me, Destiny Slocum and Shatori Walker-Kimbrough, the two players who most often have the ball in their hands, are two for nine with six turnovers. Kara, they're trying to hit that ten-point play she referenced. They've got to settle down and get back to themselves. You, know, you look at this game big picture, and coming in, we said, what will Oregon have to do? Control tempo and make... Maryland play in the half court. Don't let their offense get going. And they've done exactly that for the first 20 minutes. It's been a great game plan for Kelly Graves and the Ducks. Well, Maryland goes right to Shatori Walker Kimbrough, who struggled so mightily in the first half with the turnovers and one for six shooting. She draws the foul. Well, smart by Brenda. You've got to get her started. And if you think about the starters for Maryland, aside from Brianna Jones, who went five for 10, how about the other four were a combined two for 15? in the first half. With all that said, if Shatori Walker Kimbrough makes his free throw down seven. Yeah. And, and so in the game, still very much attached. And you know, let's see if this pressure helps them try and speed up the tempo for Oregon. Bonnie McGuire picked up foul number three, so keep an eye on that. She's been a big factor at 6-5 in the middle for the Ducks. And picked off by Walker Kimbrough. 
In transition, strong attack for two. Well, there's two mistakes right there. One, there's too much space and air that has to be covered by that pass by Ionescu, and then nobody stops the basketball in transition. Oregon had been so good transition defense, nobody picked up the ball. Oregon's first ever appearance in the Sweet 16. Their youngsters, their freshmen, have been dynamite all season long. That's another sweet move by Kazorla. I love her rhythm. Isn't it, isn't it nice? I mean, she just has all these hesitations, keep you off balance, and then just finds a way to skate her way to the basket. She's definitely an interesting piece for the Ducks. I used to hear Steve Nash talk about this all the time as a point guard. He'd say, I may not be the fastest guy in the league, but I'm the one with the ball, and I'm the one who's able to dictate the speed at which the game is played when I've got it. Rebound batted around. Look at the effort by Jones tied up on the play. The possession arrow will go to the other end. It belongs to Oregon. But Brianna Jones, the 6'3 senior, scrapping and fighting. Now, she played very well in the first half. It was a major reason that the score wasn't worse at halftime. And she had 10 points and seven rebounds and two block shots. A little easy pressure there by the Terps, broken by Oregon. Trying to make it three consecutive upsets in the NCAA tournament. And the winner to take on the winner of UCLA and UConn coming up later today here in Bridgeport. Shot clock down to five. Kazorla again weaving her way in, tried the window. Nice follow up and in by Hebert, who did not have a very good first half. Three for 10 shooting. 40 to 31, nine point lead again. And that one thrown along the baseline. Walker Kimbrough corner, no. Charles with a rebound, and she's going to be traveling with it. Kyla Charles with a turnover. They've kicked it over now 10 times. So here's the substitution. And what did Oregon say in their scout is we're going to let number three shoot. We're going to let her shoot as many as possible. And so Brenda Freeze now comes with the sub in Frazier. And Frazier's shown that she can hit that mid-range jump shot. Somebody other than Brianna Jones is going to have to come to the forefront and score for Maryland. Gunesco, great feet underneath, but Hebert could not finish it. Tight D by the Terps. They want to run. Slocum so far has been a bit of a non-factor. The freshman who has lit up many opponents in a spectacular rookie year, but quiet thus far. Frazier's been a lot noisier, almost made that. She'll be at the line. Well, she's got seven points. She had seven points. You see how confidently she's playing. Let's get to the block on the defensive end of the floor. How about this recovery by Walker Kimbrough from behind? This is a big development, guys, because Mallory McGuire just picked up her fourth personal foul. She is going to have to come out of the game. Talking about eight points four rebounds a game but a real presence at six five in that paint and out she comes and she's going to be replaced here by Gildon the six one sophomore well already we see the Fraser substitution paying dividends right just a little more aggression a little more size down low Charles is, is more of a perimeter threat in terms of her size. She's not going to necessarily post you up one on one on the block. So I like Maryland going with a little bit more of a physical front line. Vanescu in the corner, a long jumper. That's in and out. Jones tearing away another rebound. We'll see if Slocum can work some magic back and down. Here's Jones. She spins. Terrific move. Did everything right except make the shot, but she's right there to follow up with that one. I got to be honest with you. There, there's there been a few things today Brianna Jones has done that physically would have been impossible for her had she not changed her physique. Uh, that willingness to commit and change her body has changed and elevated her game. It's a great point, too. We have a photo of when she was a high school star before she signed with Maryland of her physique at that point and what it is today. It's remarkable the work that she has done to be the player that she is. Look at that. I mean, you know, the, one of the things I appreciate the most about the Maryland program is their player development. And their kids get better. And Brianna Jones, Shatori Walker, Kimbo, those two seniors have left an indelible imprint on Maryland's tradition. But they didn't walk into College Park as surefire All-Americans. They didn't. And the transformation of Brianna Jones in particular is, is spectacular. Down 50 pounds since she came onto campus. Just and, amazing. Yeah, and Karen and I were having this conversation before. Your dad, Mike? 
UConn does the same thing. Like Gabby Williams came in as a, an elite athlete, and she is every year getting better and better and more elite as a basketball player. Think about David Atkins, who used to be on the staff at Maryland, is now in the NBA as a player development guy. It's something Maryland emphasizes and is crucial. UNESCO always looking for that open shooter. It's Bando here. A little chilly. Another big rebound by Gilden, but no basket. 6-16 to go here in the third. Oregon with that six-point lead. I think they're going to get Confroy with pushing. Gilden. It will, it will yeah. be on Confroy. That'll be number one on Kristen. She can be a real factor on the offensive side with 10.6 rebounds a game. UNESCO with the dish. Gilden. Near steal there by Walker Kimbrough. And indeed, they will win it back. It'll go back over to the Turks. Does it feel like she's looking a little different, right? Shatori Walker Kimbrough seems to have settled down at the half. Getting back to her game. Steals, deflections, better decisions. All right, many Maryland fans here, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Precisely six minutes to go. That'll be on Brianna Frazier, her third, so she'll have to take a seat. Maryland fans were none too happy that most of the tickets, the extra tickets, aside from the 100 every school is allotted here in Bridgeport, were gobbled up by Connecticut fans who had a pretty good idea they were going to be here. Yeah, I mean, I just thought that was unfair in the sense that all the tickets were sold by the selection show. So the other three teams and their fans didn't have the opportunity to purchase more. Maryland fans in full throat. Those who are here, here's Slocum. One-on-one on, one on Inescu commits that foul but stops her. Slocum taking a tumble, but she'll be at the line. That'll be the second on UNESCO. What's happening? Maryland is starting to be able to play off its defense, get out in transition, pick up the pace a little bit. You, you've got to start to dictate things on the defensive end of the floor if you're Maryland. Talented freshman has set Maryland freshman records for assists and three-pointers made. Idaho's Gatorade High School Player of the Year. She led her high school to two state titles. You like that. You know, you, you're partial to people who've won in high school, Dave, because it typically means, you know, they're competitive, they play at a high level. Yeah, don't you feel like a lot of coaches look for that? Yeah. You know how to win. Mm -hmm. It's in your DNA before you ever step on a college campus. Slocum picking up the outlet on the attack. Tough shot, but she made it. See what I mean, Caleb? They're, they're just the miscues. The defense is dictating the tempo right now, and Maryland's getting out in transition where Slocum is more dangerous. Well, how about their energy defensively, though? It's, a, it's at a higher level, and, you know, especially on that weak side. I mean, Shatori has, has done a really good job on that weak side. She misses the, the box out there. Up but, and in. Count that, and she'll be at the line. But I think their activity is, is raised a little bit. And, hey, sign me up for the Gildan bandwagon. I mean, hasn't she been great? I mean, she's been great today to give them a boost off the bench. And you reference it, Dave, where McGuire picked up her fourth foul. And I'm not saying uh-oh so much because of the way that Gildan's playing this afternoon. Makes 57% of her shots. What a big lift she has been for Kelly Graves so far today. On the other side, though, you got to feel like Maryland is doing everything that Brenda Freeze asked of them at halftime, right? Oh, no question. Walker Kimbrough in particular went for the window and missed it. UNESCO with the rebound. And that's her game. Now, we saw her make some turnovers, but typically when, when Shatori puts it on the deck as a driver, she's going to shoot it. Time and time again, now, Maryland has forced Oregon to go deep into the shot clock. A foul here. And they have been very patient and made the shots. Oregon up 43 to 37 in Bridgeport. Sweet 16 with three freshmen. <laughs> and guess what? It was us or them. <laughs> Assistant coach for Oregon, Mark Campbell, after the second round upset at Duke. We're staying. Man, I love that passion. I love that. And I want one of those T-shirts, right? Because when you played when you were a kid, it was pickup. Winner stayed on the floor. You had to keep winning in order to keep playing. 
Forget about I, the shirt. I, I want him waking me up in the morning. That's what I want. That's my alarm clock. I need him talking to me while I'm going through my workout. That might help. The hype man. I, I might be able to work on getting. I'm, I'm kind of the queen of, of, of swag, so yeah. I might be able to work on you getting are. your shirt. All I know, I want out. a little more sweet talk than that, though. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. 45 37, Oregon. Still maintaining that poise. After Maryland made an outstanding run in the opening moments, Holly, of this third quarter. Right, and that last timeout, Kelly Graves, the Oregon coach, really praised his Ducks. He said, I'm so proud of you for handling their punch. We knew they were going to come out of the locker room punching at halftime, but we handled it. Now it's time to start punching back on our own. They want to continue to get mismatches. They forced a switch with Brianna Jones and UNESCO that picked up a foul on Jones. They want to continue to calm composure that handled that punch nicely. Well, Holly, anyone who watched him work at Gonzaga, he's doing exactly the same thing here. There's great spacing. The ball, ball changes sides of the floor. In fact, I was talking to the Connecticut staff. They're like, boy, they look similar to the, us. Run good offense. The right people, as Kara said, are taking the shots. The ball is spaced. They seek out the right matchups. This is such a well-coached team. Keep an eye on this, though. Hebert with foul number three a moment ago. McGuire already has four for Oregon. They go 6'4", six, 6'5", six, two freshmen, and another outstanding freshman there, Ionescu with two. Well, that's exactly what Holly just touched on. They got the switch. Ionescu had Brianna Jones, and she said, well, I'm going to work. Exactly what Holly just touched on. So quietly, Oregon is back up. Their biggest lead of the game at 10 points. Slocum trying to calm everybody down, but right now the Terps do not have a go-to. Up top, Jones. Yes, that's Stephanie Jones to bury the shot, the freshman. And her mom in the house as the baby, the 6'2 freshman, is doing well. They need a slew of others to start to heat up. Talking about the top offense in the country in the Maryland Terrapins. Jump shot all oh, net there by Bando a three as she buries it. Yeah, my take is Orla is magic off the ball screens. Kelly Graves talked to talked to us about it yesterday. I mean, she reads them exceptionally well. Walker Kimbrough whirling inside. That's a pretty play. Wow, it's a big time move right there. My goodness, from a student athlete who was every bit the athlete I mean, how many sports did she play before focusing on basketball once again bando oh. McConnor, uh oh she's starting to heat up lexi bando hits 48 percent from there second most attempts on the team more than half her overall shots that's about automatic for her Well, the UConn Huskies are in the house. The 11-time national champs, winners of 109 consecutive games, showing up for work against the number four seed UCLA that's coming up on ESPN a bit later. But let's go back to Lexi Bando. All of a sudden, she's loose in the corner and hitting everything. When you run high pick spread, a lot of pressure on weak side defender low. Watch this eye violation by Stephanie Jones. When you come down in the end and you're staring at the basketball and you've got Lexi Bando, 48% from three in the corner, you cannot beat the basketball. Got to do a better job for Maryland on that help side. <laughs> Maryland is down 15 in terms of three-point productivity. Oregon is winning that basketball game. Baseline, and they're really going downstairs there to Stephanie Jones, and she's making some shots for Maryland they desperately need. How do you come overcome the 30-20 advantage Maryland has in the paint? The game changer in all of college basketball and the next level, the three-point shot. Well, Maryland had gotten to within three at 40-37. to Oregon then went on a 13-4 to run. And they lead by 10 with the basketball here. Last two minutes of the third quarter as they seek an upset for the third straight time in the tournament. And once again, it's UNESCO. I love her. I mean, I just love the poise with which she plays. And she doesn't force the issue, but she understands she's the shot creator and the shot maker for this team. She's got to make plays. Tipped away, controlled by the Ducks. Here they come. Certainly at their own pace. Great feed, and there's Hebert to connect. Uh, on the open floor, Ionesco is playing at her pace. She's going to dictate where the ball should go. Two on one makes the perfect pass. By Maryland in deep trouble as the number three seed. Many believed that they had been badly underseeded, but here they are against the number 10, and the number 10 has been a far better team here today. 
No coverage of the Division I Men's Basketball Championship Regional Finals continues tonight on TBS at 6 p.m. That'll be number 11 Xavier taking on number one Gonzaga. For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Will Mark Few finally get to a Final Four? He's got an outstanding player in Nigel Williams-Goss and the double-digit seed for Chris Mack and Xavier. Wow, that's going to be compelling. What a job Chris Mack has done. He lost his starting point guard, Ed Edmund Sumner, yep. out for the season and in the Elite Eight. Been a lot of talk about him in that Indiana job. Yes. Cropping up here in the last 48 hours. Yeah, Steve Alford in the mix now that his season is over. Yep. And UCLA. I think Kentucky was more than a tune-up, Mr. Ball. Tough move inside. Hebert is beginning to cook. Do not start poking LeVar Ball. <laughs> we don't, we he, don't need anything. He, need he any may fire that. right back yes. at you in the next 10 seconds. You're, you're exactly right. Fox was just amazing last night. Slocum with a fall away for two. Pretty shot there by Destiny Slocum, but they need much more. I mean, to be honest with you, they need much more on the defensive end of the floor. They've got to continue to make stops because what's happening right now is Oregon withstood their run, right? They got within three. Oregon responds with a 13-4 run, and they're still controlling tempo. You can see what Maryland's trying to do, but UNESCO's having none of it. Went for the trap. Hebert was open. Tries for the second time. Came up empty. Walker Kimbrough had a flash of offense early in the third quarter. Now she's frustrated. That one taken away. Kazorla. Bando again. The other side. Can't hit this one. Three seconds. She tries it again. But that one well short. That was Slocum trying to duplicate what she did against West Virginia. Not falling today. Yeah, no time and score. I mean, she had an opportunity to at least get it to a long three if she made a couple hard push for hard dribbles. I mean, she caught that basketball. There's still three or four seconds left. Point two still showing. The inbounds, UNESCO, and that'll be it. As she heaves it up off the backboard. And we are heading for the fourth quarter. Still showing point one on the clock, but the officials have blown it dead for the third. So we're heading for the fourth. Oregon trying for the upset of Maryland when we come back. Welcome back to the Bridgeport Regional here with Maryland head coach Brenda Fries. And coach, you have been imploring your defense to make them feel, feel you. Why can't your defense get it together so, so much? I, I wish we could find our team. I mean, Oregon has a lot to do with that right now. I mean, they're uh, making us pay on every mistake that we have. So uh, disappointed. we got to find a way in these next 10 minutes uh, if we're, we're going to advance because right now they're picking us apart. They're big post players out with four fouls. Can you bang it inside more and go with Brianna Jones? Yeah, I mean, we're trying to get more touches, but uh, we got to be able to not turn the ball over. Uh, we got to be able to make plays and uh, get back to some poise and composure. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Brianna Jones does have a double double 12 points and 10 rebounds at times. She's been all by herself. Well 16 turnovers for the team uh, but Kara Destiny Slocum and Walker Kimbrough both have four so they've combined for half of those 16 turnovers. Now the third quarter Maryland shot the ball better 54 percent but Oregon hit 53 percent. And despite having two key bigs in foul trouble, they had others, Kara, pick up the slack. I mean, this performance by Oregon, it's been complete. It's not like they've come out and hit 12 threes and say, you know what, they just had one of those shooting nights. It's been offensive execution. It's been a great attachment to the game plan on the defensive end, and they've gotten contributions from everybody they've put in the game. It's fascinating. We are just talking about the Indiana men's job. The reports are coming out that Archie Miller is going to take that job and leave Dayton and become the new coach for Indiana. Well, he's done such a magnificent job at Dayton, and because they have such good support, great fan base, I think it's it was going to be a special job that he left for. And you talk about the great traditions, Kentucky, North Carolina, Duke, Indiana, right there amongst those high-profile jobs. But here in Bridgeport, the Oregon Ducks are the big story. All the way across the country, they continue to play great basketball. A turnover there, but up by 10 in the fourth over the number three seed, Maryland. Maryland has yet to make a three. When you're down 10, you could use a momentum bucket from deep. I'm taken back to the conversation we had with Destiny Slocum yesterday, and we talked about knowing when to set up your teammates and knowing when it's time for you to score. 
Destiny, it's time for you to score. It's time for you to attack. It's time for you to look to make shots. You know, as Jones hit that basket and now has 14 points, she did that against UConn. It was in the second half of that game where she put the game on her shoulders. They wound up only losing that game by six or seven points. From the corner again, it's Bando. Lexi Bando, what a story here in the second half. Well, they're leaving her space in the corner. You've got to give a ton of credit to UNESCO to have the vision and understand the read to deliver that pass. 62-51. Walker Kimbrough, another miss. Jones has to clean it up. She's been doing it all day. A one-man band. Now I think if you're Oregon, you'll trade twos for threes all night long. Coming up on the eight-minute mark of the fourth. Ionescu doubled up. Back for Gildan. Eight to get off a shot on the drive. And that's going to be a blocking foul. Count that. Outstanding play by Kazorla. I think she's made the most interesting offensive plays all day. And she'll be at the line where she hits 79%. Foul on Brianna Jones. Maite Cazorla from Spain. She has won four gold medals playing for her home country at various levels. So she is tested on the international front. And I think that speaks to the poise with which she's played all day. In fact, the entire group has played with. Up by 12 in the fourth quarter and turned over again by the Terps. Well, they've turned it over 17 times. Oregon with really sticky defense all morning and now into the afternoon. Game starting at 8.30 a.m. their time. Gazorla got the pass free. They move it well for Hebert. Blocked. Looked like Charles got a hand on it. Maryland in dire need of a long run to get back in this game. Slocum trying to start it, but can't. Rebound picked off by Confoy in the second effort. Very puzzling, Shatori Walker Kimbrough, the day that she has had as a senior up against all these freshmen. Slick feed, and Charles connects. Gonna have to continue to absorb this pressure, stay spaced, don't turn it over. Gildan handing off for Cazorlo. Gildan another hero today. Well, what is she doing in addition to what we've already talked about? The pressure release she's given them on the pressure. Gunesco with eight to shoot it. Now down to five. Knocked away by Walker Kimbrough. Battle for that as the shot clock did expire. Turned over. Walker Kimbrough. Here's Slocum's three. She was wide open but could not stick it. That is not a good sign for Maryland. They're a good three-point shooting team at 38%. She's made 71 at an incredible clip, almost 38%. Unesco. Oh, a terrific feed for Hebert. Seventh assist. You, see, she, you know what, what did Brenda Free say to, to Holly Rowe? They're picking us apart. It's Ionescu who's picking you apart. Oregon led the Pac-12 in assists. You can see why. Such outstanding spacing, and they look for each other. Relentlessly, Walker Kimbrough. No, her cold day continues. Jones going tumbling out of play. And a shove on that one with 541 left. Let's watch UNESCO picking apart this defense, because watch what happens. Look at her, all of these players around here. And she's going to make this read to the corner all the way across. Now, you've got to be thinking ahead of the play in order to make that pass. And on time, on target, an easy opportunity. This young woman is creating great looks for all her teammates. McGuire back in with the four fouls for Oregon. The last one went on Gildan. Over the top into the backcourt. Not a backcourt violation because it went all the way into the backcourt before anybody touched it. Slocum spinning, whirling. No. It has not been her day. So far, the day has belonged to the Ducks. 
You can see Kelly Graves twirling his fingers like saying, okay, let's use clock here. Tom Foy went down. Bando's open. Not a good idea the way he, she has been shooting it. Big rebound, Gilda. Right back up. She's had a marvelous day. I'm driving that thing. I'm telling you, I'm driving the Gildan bandwagon. What she's been able to do today, above her averages, her impact on both ends of the floor, she's been locked in and focused. Terrific. 11 and 9, a typical day for her is four points and two rebounds. Yep. But if you're going to go on to the Elite Eight, you need something like that, someone who comes out of nowhere. Frazier driving it, banks it in, and a foul, too. She'll be at the line. Well, don't misunderstand something. We'll talk about this on the other side, but should Oregon advance, she can be a crucial piece should they face the Huskies. More to be played here before we get to that. Maria, thank you very much. Here in Bridgeport, Connecticut, a story developing. The 10 seed Oregon at it again. On top here, 69-57. Still time for Maryland. But it's also time, I think, to start talking about what a feather and a cap it is for the Pac-12, the way that Oregon has played in this tournament. They were 8-10 and 10 in their conference. They lost 13 games, and yet that conference, so tough, they look battle-tested for an environment like this. Well, I think you can point going back to last year's Final Four where yep. two Pac-12 teams get in. The influence of Mike ne Neighbors in terms of the schedule and good drive by Shatori walker Kimbo and a nice, efficient play. And I, I think you also have to think about it. it. took this young group some time to build their habits on the defensive end of the floor. Carry. you think they, they ended up the Pac-12 regular season losing three straight before heading to the Pac-12 tournament? Yeah, 8 and 10 in the Pac-12. I mean, this team didn't play like this all season long, and it's a testament to these young players staying consistent, working, and then this coaching staff to bring a young team along. Uh, you know, them peaking at the right time, that is a skill as a team and as a coaching staff and a philosophy to get your players to peak at the right time. You think great defenses are culture-based, and it's culture-based because of habits every day is a turnover there by UNESCO, and she barks at McGuire like, you're not ready. So it just, it took a little bit of time. Hey, the NIT is heading to New York for its final four. Semi-final action, tipping off Tuesday at 7 Eastern. CSU Bakersfield taking on Georgia Tech on ESPN and watch ESPN. Walker Kimbrough, can she heat up in time? Another bank shot. She's made a couple now in the last minute. And that cuts the lead to eight. Suddenly she has 14. But every time the Terps have made a run, the Ducks have countered it. They've done it with poise and patience. Still so much time here, so you've got to continue to generate quality shots. You see the aggressive trapping now for Maryland, and another strip. Jones takes it away, and a foul on the play. Ionescu getting a little frustrated there. She's picked up a couple of fouls. Well, she's also picked up the basketball against a trap, and you've got to anticipate that coming. Use your escape dribble, so keep the dribble alive, Dave, and back it out to create more vision for yourself. Kara, that's four on her. Uh, you got to be careful here. If you're Oregon, because you know Maryland now is in desperation mode, and Inescu's got to understand they're going to trap her and bring the double every time off of that ball screen. Has to be prepared for it and look to get it out of out of her hands quickly. It's a big possession for the Terps. Walker Kimbrell wants it, lost it, came out of her hand and saved by the Ducks. Now she steals it back and lays it in. So you got game pressure in an NCAA tournament environment for a young team. And Kelly Graves saying, let's go. Let's run good offense. I take his Orla with Jones at six foot three bouncing out there on the baseline. Bando with the catch. Kelly, three minutes to go. Kelly Graves has three timeouts at his disposal. So if he doesn't score on the next possession, would he use one if necessary? Gets a big score there, and he uses one there. Yonescu, the freshman, freshman in name only. Knocking down a big shot to make it 71 to 63. Under three minutes to go. We take a look at our Capital One Cup impact performance. She has been dynamite again today. This is a typical game for her. That's exactly right. She contributes in every phase. And it is not eye-popping athleticism. This is basketball smarts. And that play right there is typical. I love her vision. I love her pace. And I love her leadership ability. Let's go to Holly Rowe. 
Well, she was also a very unusual recruitment. This program changer drew out her recruitment, not arriving on campus till the day before summer school was supposed to start. She surprised Coach Graves, not telling him that she was even coming or committing to Oregon. She walked into the gym and he said, I heard someone's voice behind me. I turn over and look around and it's Sabrina Ionescu, a program changer that has him on the brink of an elite eight. But Kelly said, I was glad I brought my blood pressure pills that day. I turn around, <laughs> I see her there and I go, oh my goodness. She finally made it. She waited till the latest possible moment. That's going to be an offensive foul. A blocking foul here. 242 to go. That foul will go on Frazier, number four. Number four. I disagree. That's a terrible call at a crucial moment for Maryland. Wow. It looked more at how Bando reacted to the screen yes. than the actual screen itself. So Cazorla trying to penetrate. Bando so dangerous from three once she got going. Shot clock at eight for Oregon. Yonescu around and out. Jones has the rebound to start the break to Slocum. The Terps typically score around 90 a game, so the Ducks defense has been suffocated. In the paint, Frazier, one pass too many. Yonescu trying to beat the field. Can't connect. Hebert up. Misfiring. Pull it. They should pull this out. 145 to go. Oregon dreaming of another upset. The foul on Jones. Her fourth. Time running out on Brenda Freeze and the number three Terps. Talking about double digit seats like number 10 Oregon. This would be the third double digit to advance to the lead eight. Kelly Graves did it previously at Gonzaga. He did it as an 11 seat back in 2011. Trying to run some clock here. Ionescu to the paint. Taking her time. 125 to go. This is typically when you start to scramble and Shatori going to foul her. And put a very good foul shooter at the line, 81%. Actually, not there yet. So that's their fourth. So one more to get there. 122 to play. And that foul will go on Slocum. So her third. 71-63 Oregon. Time to shoot now for Hebrew to make 70%. And I just got to say this. There's a lot of time left and free throws to be made. And you were talking about Maryland cheating. I, I will tell you in no way, shape, or form did I ever, ever have the sense that Maryland had overlooked Oregon. They were locked in. They knew this was a good team, a well-coached team. This was about Oregon coming in understanding that they had to do certain things control the tempo not give up easy baskets in transition and doing everything their coach asked this was not about overlooking a team up to 10 once again for that oregon lead and it's just about time to turn out the lights on the maryland season they turn it over again that's been a big part of the narrative today 106 to go you've got two Great careers coming to a close if you're the Maryland Terrapins. You, you have Rihanna Jones and Shakori Walker Kimbrough, both highly productive, both have been to a Final Four, both have been integral to the success of the program under Brenda Fries. Kazorla to the line, 79%. And as Kara has made the point, I mean, they're getting production up and down this lineup. Maryland with so much success. And I know what you're saying about not looking at UConn. It will be written about, though. It'll be incorrect if they look at it. I think people will absolutely look at that and say you overlooked the number 10 seed. But that would be disrespectful to Oregon. I agree. Because they played a marvelous basketball game. UNESCO showing up on a big stage with a big spotlight and delivering all day. How fun is basketball going to be in Eugene for the next next four years? 
with Ionescu leading the way. I mean, this team, and, and we talked about it off the top, young, fearless, hungry, not knowing that they should feel pressure. And they came out today, and they didn't pitch a perfect game, but they scattered only two or three hits in the field, Dave. Five double-digit scores. Ionescu contributing with her rebounding, with her passing. Frazier filing out. She'll be back next year for Maryland. Played a really strong game today. Did everything she could do. But Oregon preparing to move on for the winner of UConn and UCLA. That is right around the corner on ESPN. We'll have it for you from Bridgeport, Connecticut. The Oregon Ducks trying to spring another upset. It's just about to say I was shocked that Brenda Fries is not getting Shatori Walker Kimbro and Brianna Jones out of this game. You wonder does she foul or and she'll get the ball back here. So that'll give her an opportunity. A couple subs at the table, but they deserve one final round of applause. How about that slap of the hand between two of those gifted freshmen, Ionescu and Hebert, launching great careers for the Ducks. The leaner won't drop. And Brenda going to use a timeout just to do that, to get those two seniors. And she's saying this is just a substitution. And let's watch the Maryland crowd respond to these two young kids. Uh, so deserving, brilliant careers. Brianna Jones, number one rebounder. She set the single season scoring record today for Maryland. Shatori Walker Kimber, one of the great shooters in the history of the program, over 2,100 points. It did not go their way today. They were the favorite and a heavy favorite. But Oregon is going to win the game and move on to the Elite Eight. On Monday night, there's the horn. The Ducks have done it again. Another upset for Oregon. Make it three straight here on the East Coast. They may never go home. <laughs> They're loving it here. And they knock off Maryland 77-63 in the first upset of the day. And they earned it. I would say this. I think they earned it with defense. Oh, no, it's how Kelly Graves has won his entire career. It begins on the defensive end of the floor for him. They run such tremendous offense. And how about a team dominated by freshmen finishing the game on an 8-0 run? You talk about learning how to win and figuring out how to close. Welcome to the Elite Eight, the Oregon Ducks. I think Kara started using the word poise around the first quarter, and we repeated it many times. They were the more poised team here today and fired up to be moving on as we go to Holly Roll. Well, Ruthie, you guys came out in the second half expecting a big response from Maryland. How did you weather that storm? Uh, I think we just focused on our defense. Definitely defense won the game for us. Yes, <laughs> and that's how we did it. You did. This is a team that scores 90 points a game. What was the key defensively? Um, we definitely had to stop. Uh, they're all a good team. We had to stop Brianna especially. She's a great post player. And I think we just went out and played our game and we got the win. Why is this Oregon team so comfortable on this stage? I think it's because we have nothing to lose. Coach tells us every day we have nothing to lose, and a team with nothing to lose is a dangerous team. And we go out and have fun, and that helps us. All right, Ruthie, big question for you. What happens to the winner? We go to um, the lead eight. Good answer. Uh, winner stays. Winner stays. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She got it right on both counts. Yes. <laughs> they are staying. They're not going anywhere. And whoever has to face them in the next round has their hands full. They are the Cinderella in Bridgeport. And they keep on winning 77-63 the final. The studio update coming up next. Here comes Maria Taylor in the studio.